So people are dialing in as well. All right, so we've got several still popping in, so we'll give it just about 30 more seconds. Again, good morning and good evening for those of you dialing in from abroad. For those of you here local in Central Europe, time frame, not yet lunchtime, so plenty of time in their day and looking good. So, hi, and uh, my name is Craig Schmehill. Welcome to another SAP Community Call. Well, this time we are, we have the privilege and the, and the pleasure of having Gunther join us to talk about the SAP Cloud Platform, um, kind of the central nervous system and, and kind of the heart and soul of, of things these days. Gunther, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you have a busy schedule and Life is different these days <laughs> with everything going on. So thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having me here today in this call. Very much uh, appreciate uh, you and, of course, everybody online um, taking a look at uh, what's new with SAP Cloud Platform. Yeah, I mean, as you already said, these are interesting times. Uh, I think we all get used to this uh, new norm of doing business and uh, delivering value to our, our customers. And that's what we do. So uh, despite these circumstances, I think we, uh, we managed to get quite some new stuff going. Fantastic. And, and, you know, honestly, I think everybody's ready to hear about it. I'm excited to hear about it. Um, and even more excited to hear from directly from you about it instead of reading a you know, some news release or some release notes or something like that. So I, I, I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen who are on the call, uh, we do have a Q&A uh, button down there that you can click and ask your questions. And please feel free to put your start putting your questions at, at any time during this presentation. Gunther is going to go through some slides, but he's also going to take time for all of your questions or as, at least as many of them as we can get to as possible. Uh, so without further ado, Gunther, it is your floor. Please take it away. Yeah, thank you very much. And I, I thought we'd do this uh, such that I... I walk all of you through, you know, some updates and, and an update on, on our focus and strategy, of course, but then probably even more important, uh, share a few things that, that are new and maybe walk you through a, a little bit of, of uh, view on our service catalog to see uh, that this is real. Um, yeah, and, and then we can take it from there and I'm happy to answer all, all questions that you might have. So when you look at the... Uh, SAP Cloud Platform, Greg already said, it's, it, it plays a, a central role in SAP strategy. It is uh, a part of the business technology platform overall that enables the intelligent enterprise. Uh, and, and the two pieces that you know, um, Cloud Platform in particular delivers as part of this overall strategy is, is the, the integration and the extension role in the SAP ecosystem. So, in that sense, our strategy and focus remains very stable. Um, and, and we've been focusing in the last months, uh, like we did before, on, on delivering capabilities to accelerate integration uh, in the SAP ecosystem. So uh, integrating SAP and non-SAP, integrating on-premise and the cloud. Um, also, uh, of, of course, uh, enabling the flexibility that that our customers demand in, uh, these days. And the second important pillar of Cloud Platform is the extension side of the house. So we want to enable our customers, we want to enable you to quickly build apps uh, on top of Cloud Platform related to uh, other SAP solutions, uh, um, having a broader view into different channels. So in that sense, integration and extension remains our mantra, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I can say a little more in, in a few minutes what that means and how we go for it. What I'd also like to share is with having those two uh, major pillars in mind, uh, we, we have an even stronger focus than before in enabling the ecosystem uh, with these capabilities. Why? And number one, our partners uh, matter a lot to us. They always mattered, um, but the more you know, adoption we see, the broader the scope gets, the more it is important that we scale uh, into the ecosystem with the help of our partners. So we, we have quite some, uh, you know, topics 
either in making or already delivered to also enable uh, our partners uh, to create value on top of SAP Cloud Platform. So that's the focus. Um, and I hope this is already well known by now. And uh, what, what I'd like to share quickly is, you know, we, we continue to deliver along these this themes and pillars. And before I get into some of the, some of the, uh, uh, some of the details here, maybe we, we take the chance and switch a little bit to the software itself and, and, and see what this means because integration and extension are, are broad terms. And I wanna make this a little more tangible now. So uh, let me just uh, switch tools here and um, I hope that you can see the browser now. Um, yes, we can. Thank you. And what we have here is the so-called uh, discovery center of SAP Cloud Platform. Um, I hope uh, some of you have already tried this out. Um, as, as part of our mission of integration and extension, it's very important we give all of you an an easy access to the capabilities and an easy access to the services that Cloud Platform provides, but also help, you know, with, with what we call missions here, where, you know, we, we provide, um, you know, step-by-step -step guidance, we provide additional material, um, and, and uh, we, we can also help virtually by assigning coaches. By the way, one comment on, on because we discussed this initially, the, the new situation and everything we, we experience in, in this uh, um, pandemic situation. Uh, you see here a digital uh, interaction, digital adoption of a platform like Cloud Platform also matters, right? We, we, we live in days where, you know, uh, yes, of course, uh, on-site projects still matter, but there we also want to enable more incremental projects uh, without having the need to having experts physically in place. And this is one of the things that the Discovery Center via the missions here uh, also provides. So, so check it out. This is public. Everyone can uh, uh, make use of it. But the thing that I wanted to show today is not so much the missions, but the, the services. And oh my God, when I have the browser open <laughs> like this, you see it all, uh, all in a row. Uh, so don't get hung up on, on how many services you hear. Uh, actually, by the, just by the size of my browser window here, you see it's a lot. Um, what, what I wanted to point out here, and I hope you can, you can see this on the screen, we group our services exactly under these categories of the extension suite. And uh, that in, in itself has, of course, different parts. Uh, there is the pure developer efficiency, catering for the different developer roles. Uh, uh, there is the digital experience part because the experience element matters a lot. We, we need to support multi-channel. Uh, we we are introducing, of course, uh, new forms of interaction like conversational AI. Um, and then a, an area which we also double down on uh, a lot is, you know, the, the world of digital process automation. And I'll come back to that in a second. And then when I scroll down further, you see um, the second major pillar of, of SAP Cloud Platform, which is the integration suite, right? including things like API management, uh, of course, our um, uh, process integration service here. Um, but you also see that we are, that we have packaged together these services also in, in one commercial bundle that, that was one ask that we got as well. So you can consume this, all of these services in a, in a quite flexible way. So some of it is new here. Um, and uh, some of the services are enhanced. Again, I don't wanna go through all of it. This would probably just be way too much for this call, but there's one more thing I, I, wanna, I wanna point out. And, and that is the topic of, of what we call business services. So let me search for this here for a second. Um, and what you see is I, I get a filter here now and, um, and some of the services are just that they have this, this label, this tag of being a business service. So um, 
of course, we believe that, that all services of cloud platform are, are business relevant. Um, but we use this term of business services for a particular group of services, which in itself actually contains some significant business logic, um, or it, it, it just transports some business know-how, and it, it, it makes this know-how available for reuse, right? So uh, we have uh, things like here, compliance reporting, service ticket intelligence, uh, tax as a service and so on. And you already see by, by, the, uh, by the type of, of, um, of service, this already includes uh, some, some business know-how and, and uh, some, some input that, that we have um, given into the service. So um, that was basically the, the quick um, view I wanted to have into the, the catalog and the discovery service. Again, I would encourage you to uh, check this out and, and try it out yourself. And as you could uh, see, there is, there is additional information, there's documentation. We also have trial scenarios up and running so that you can quickly try out things. Now coming back a little bit to this view on, on what is you, uh, new and what do we continue. And uh, maybe I, I, I go in with a few highlights, but then when we come to the, to the Q&A, um, well, we let you pick you know, your areas of interest and, and respond to that. So one topic um, which we continue to, to drive, of course, is the integration suite. And it has always been one of our, you know, differentiators and one of our uh, important uh, values that we deliver uh, to, to have pre-packaged content out of the box for SAP to SAP integration, uh, success factors to S4 and so on. But what you also see in this wave, uh, we, are, we are delivering additional content and also quite uh, uh, substantial scenarios where we also even integrate with some non-SAP stuff out of the box. So we, we, we are having some more focus on, on that uh, part of, of the content as well. So again, good input. And by now we have more than 1,450 of these pre-packaged integration packs. All of this uh, can be found on the SAP uh, API Business Hub. Uh, again, something that you could easily check out. Um, I already mentioned the fact that we are also, just as an option, not only providing the, the family of services for integration as part of Cloud Platform, but we also have a choice now to uh, consume the whole integration suite, so the whole set of services together. And of, on the one side, this is, this is a new simplified pricing and, and onboarding and provisioning. Uh, but it's also, of course, a theme for us on the product side to, uh, to connect the strong tools we have, to have, you know, even uh, broader flows across the different services and combine our value into uh, specific integration scenarios. So the, the cloud platform integration suite is also a, a strong focus and that will continue to be the case. Now, Workflow, um, it's, it's a very well-known term. It's been around in the industry forever. <laughs> um, but of course, for us in SAP, it, it matters a lot. And, and uh, we, we also delivered recently uh, some, some great enhancements in workflow management. Uh, all of this is part of the, of the extension suite, so the second part of our brain. And, and uh, not only did we enhance our workflow capabilities also with content, by the way, but uh, this is also complemented with one inbox, with business rules, with the corresponding process visibility like you see here in this dashboard so that you can not only run processes end to end, but that you also have all of the full visibility instance level based uh, across the uh, uh, business process. And then the one thing which, which I'd like to point out is here, based on, on our workflow services, based on our workflow management, we, we expose a simple uh, view into it, which we call the process flexibility uh, cockpit. So why does that matter? 
on the one side, that's an ingredient that, that we provide as part of our low code capabilities to you know, non-developer personas. And, and as such, that's already an important part of, of, of uh, value that we need to deliver. But second, also in some cases, this kind of flexibility cockpit is also used and exposed then over time by some application parts to make flexible changes to the, to the process. So sometimes we call this having, you know, pockets of process flexibility and, and, and uh, have that covered well by the underlying runtime. So all in all, I think uh, uh, exciting enhancements on the workflow management side, you, you already know this has been around for a while that our capabilities are of course complemented with, with the RPA offering that we have. And we are also using our conversational AI capabilities to apply to this world of, of processes as well. So we have a process assistant, for example, uh, in place using conversational kind of communication. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's workflow, also an exciting topic. Check it out if you have some time. Um, maybe we just flip over this. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just pick and choose and, and let you uh, do the same when we go to Q&A. But, but one also important uh, new piece of cloud platform moving forward is what we call the business application studio. You've probably heard about it. Uh, this is the evolution of uh, what we started with Web IDE, um, and and we are making use of of you know uh, VS Code underneath, um, and 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 putting our um, our plugins together on top of it for a new and and, and modern development environment, uh, where you you on the one side make make use of the IDE features um, that that are there and 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 provided. But then we add, you know, a consistent experience and and our plugins and solutions on top. I think that's a very strong combination. We continue to enhance Business Application Studio with all of our design time capabilities, and then this gives us this gives us new cap new new value as well, right? You have offline development. Uh, you have a great loop over time from from a low code view into the pro code developer and uh, view, and and these are all um features and that that we that we're working on over time so business application studio also a very important uh, ingredients of of our strategy all right conversational maybe that's my last one and then i would maybe open it up for for, for q a and see um you know uh, which topics we want to double click on um I think you all feel that uh, conversational is becoming one ingredient of a modern and, and strong um, uh, user experience. We are embedding this as part of our capabilities. So uh, we are, for example, working with our colleagues in success factors and S4 to uh, embed more and more conversational AI capabilities into the overall solution experience. And, and of course, we. Uh, enhance our tools as we go. We we want to make it more productive to uh, you know develop your your bots uh, to create your content and to train your models. So um, again, conversational I feel is a is a very uh, interesting subject uh, for everyone to check it out. All right, I know this is probably a lot of content in the different areas. So maybe I'll pause here for a second and uh, see if there are already questions on some of the stuff that I, um, that I just showed. We have a lot of questions already coming in. Um, I'm getting them actually, uh, silly me, I actually uh, agreed in Twitter to take questions there and I've got them coming in on Slack channels as well. So I will, I will try to go through here and pick the ones that are, are somewhat related to start with. Um, some general ones. So for example, some of the services in the Discovery Center are marked as retiring soon. Uh, for example, Postgres SQL, but others like SAP Leonardo Machine Learning Foundation are not. But if you check the documentation in API Business Hub, they are marked as becoming decommissioned. How is one supposed to keep an overview of what is actually up to date? That's a great question and also some inherent feedback in it, I guess. Um, so uh, 
first maybe let me respond to the feedback. Um, I, we, we want to make the, the uh, service catalog, I showed also the, you know, the, the face and the version of the truth where we communicate the, you know, the, the, the status of a certain service. Um, and, and we are uh, introducing a life cycle to this. Uh, so in, 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 in one sentence, we hear you, uh, we want to make this the one place where we communicate how we evolve because of course, Cloud Platform evolves, we're adding new services. But let me um, comment on the one on, on Postgres. Um, so th that is one of the to uh, topics where we, you know, as part of our strategy that we kicked off uh, in 2019, where we said, this is nothing that we want to provide ourselves. This we source from our partners and the hyperscalers. So um, we will continue to have a Postgres service of cloud platform, but it's, it's based on an underlying implementation by the hyperscalers. So don't worry, this will not, we will not drop this, but we will switch the implementation. So I, I agree, we got to be more explicit in what these stickers actually mean. All right. <laughs> Good. Um, so there's a couple of here around the integration scenarios. Um, one are, and, and I'll, I'll give you two questions together. Um, the screen's jumping around on me because we actually enabled voting, silly of me. Uh, one, are the integrations customizable? And two, how are the integrations licensed and are external ones priced differently? Yeah. So. Uh, the first one, are they customizable? Of course, and that's that's a major quality of the product. So we deliver this iFlows, this is how we call it. So the integration flows out of the box, but the way this works on a very simplistic view is you can at any point in time copy this, this iFlows into your tenant and then you can modify it. You have actually full tooling, a, 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 the iFlow designer with palettes, the, the, not uh, um, the notation to do it and, and so on. And, and you can actually also build iFlows from scratch completely, of course. Uh, all of our customers are doing this as well. Uh, so yes, uh, absolutely customizable, changeable um, and, and so on. Then of course, it's part of your, your own uh, tenant and um, that's, uh, th that's then something that you manage from there uh, on onwards. So absolutely answer is yes. On the pricing side, uh, maybe I, I, I think we have Stefan Schad online as well. Um, yep. Can, Stefan, maybe you wanna take that one? Yeah, on the, um, so sorry, I was, I was trying to respond to another pricing question in the chat right now. So, so was that on the internal and external integrations? Yes. Um, so the, uh, well, the iFlows that we have are coming as part of the integration suite. And uh, actually as part of our recently renews, uh, released integration suite bundle, also the open connectors, uh, which is the external and the non-SAP uh, integration are part of that package as well, right? So, uh, so this, is, this comes as part of our uh, integration suite license. Thank you, Stefan. Yeah, and, and I see there's a, another one in the chat already on CPA and paper use. I'm gonna to respond to that in the chat. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Stefan. All right, so um, there's a couple in here related to BAS. Uh, the first one is, does BAS uh, support ABAP development? And the second is, um, well, it's a comment more, uh, perhaps you can address. I'm still not convinced by BAS. It reinforces the old it wasn't invented here complaint from customers and partners. You really need to make the value proposition real. So perhaps you can go a little bit more into detail around the business application studio um, and where that's coming from, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in, in fact, I would say, um, I believe the strategy we have around business application studio is indeed a very, open strategy, we, we, we wanted to embrace, you know, on the one side, uh, strong IDE features, but also be very open to communities uh, and so on. So in, in my mind, it's, it's actually, you could debate it, but it's the opposite of a not invented here uh, thing. We want to be open, we want to uh, embrace uh, the community, but add our specific value to it, right? And, and, um, and, and, and the, 
I think that's a strong value proposition because again, we, we, we embed very strong IDE capabilities, but we add our, our low code tools, our graphical uh, environments uh, and so on. So uh, it's, I think it's very open. It gives us a lot of flexibility. If we build this the right way, a lot of contribution from many uh, communities and teams is possible. So I, uh, on that one, by the way, we get, we get great feedback and input. Now, have we delivered all of the values that, that can be provided on top of Business Application Studio yet? No, we haven't. This is a roadmap. So we are starting, you know, step by step with the different design times. And uh, we, we have not made ABAP available on, on, on BOSS yet. Uh, actually, I need to check the details here, but uh, it, this is not, not yet available. So uh, I think it's a very open strategy. And, and again, you get a few real advantages also for take this take this offline development it was always feedback from the community from customers to say as a developer i want to have these quick turnaround times i i want to code try it out uh, right away not you know not depending on the on the server all of the time and 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 that those quick round trips uh, we and we enable nicely uh, for example with the application studio so it and your point is valid. We need to, you know, articulate this better, probably, and that's also what I'm um, been pushing the teams to do. We need to provide more tutorials, uh, trial scenarios, uh, so that you can all get your hands around it. All right. So here's um, another question. This is from earlier in the um, when you were first started to present. Um, when you were talking about the S4 HANA and Salesforce integration, the question is, is, is that for an on-prem and cloud and hybrid model or only for a limited? So we have, as in, in, and, and to say it right away, we need to, of course, uh, have a detailed look into the um, S4 integration scenarios. Uh, there is a catalog of all of the cases there. Um, actually, uh, Stefan, maybe we could uh, share sure. a link uh, to the API hub with this uh, yes, I will. Uh, person who is asking. And, and then we, um, this we can check out in detail. Uh, but what's very important, of course, from the beginning onwards with CPI, we have been addressing an uh, on-premise to uh, cloud integration as well as, as part of the scenario. So that is possible. The runtime, so the actual integration runtime sits in the cloud of CPI today, right? So, but we have means like using Cloud Connector and, and, and uh, so on uh, to also tap into the on-premise world and cover a lot of these scenarios. And, and uh, one thing I also wanted to say is we are uh, I'm not sure if we have already done it. I think we are. This must be due soon, at least. We are exposing a, a lot more on-premise APIs from S4 via the uh, API Business Hub now than we used to do. Um, that was an ask by the community as well, and we are responding to this uh, because we we completely understand that you know, you know you have a lot of uh, on-premise uh, SAP systems, and we want to uh, continue to connect well to those as well. Okay, um, I hope that answered that question. Is Greg gone? It looks like. <laughs> Are you there? I think we lost him. Okay, uh, so sorry. Uh, so 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 then maybe this is Stefan. Maybe I'll take over then the moder moderation until Craig is back. Um, <laughs> Ah, you, you have the, the questions in front of you. Thank yeah, you. I do. I do. I do have the question in front of me. Um, uh, Mat Matthias Gunther, one uh, a good old friend of ours, Matthias Steiner, is asking. Um, you mentioned the role of the ecosystem from a partner perspective, and uh, he's mentioning there have been some new partner programs like like Spotlight being rolled out, but they seem to be focused on, on SaaS solution and not technical capabilities. So beyond our collaboration um, with our with our hyperscaler partners, uh, are we any, doing anything to get more technology? partners also on board and involved with SAP Cloud Platform, but what's the role here? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, great question, Matthias, and, and good to um, be connected again. Um, so various 
activities here. On the one side, um, we want to be very open for, you know, partners to expose their capabilities via the cloud platform, also uh, technology partners. This could happen in different ways. Uh, you could, of course, uh, deliver apps via the App Center, but you could also expose even uh, services via the cloud platform. You might have seen when I browsed through the catalog, there were already a couple of partner-based services uh, available. Um, so, so that's uh, possible in general. Uh, of course, it's always subject to a discussion, you know, about the, the service itself and so on. Uh, but that's one way. Um, and then the other is, is commercially, or let me say from a business perspective, we are also introducing uh, new options, new models. So one of the things we are uh, working on is to expose the CPEA, uh, the Cloud Platform Enterprise Agreement, also for indirect, so that partners can uh, sell that uh, as well. So uh, we are also working on some commercial models. We are trying in general to lower the barrier for partners, making it easier to onboard, making it easier to play with Cloud Platform, both technically as well as, as uh, commercially. And, and we have quite some backlog uh, on, on both sides of the house and we have already delivered some parts of it. Um, so uh, maybe we can, there is regular updates to our partner community um, and, and uh, we could include you there as well, of course, if you're not already in. Okay, thank you, um, Gunther. So there, there's a, uh, another more question on, on our strategy moving forward with regards to the, the infrastructure and, and that's about the neo environment. So given the context of our collaborations with the infrastructure, our focus on multi-cloud, uh, SAP Cloud Platform multi-cloud, yeah. what's the future of uh, our neo environment? Yeah, that, that's a, 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 an important topic to us. And indeed, uh, we have an open multi-cloud strategy. Uh, we have deployed cloud platform on AWS, on Azure, on GCP, on Ali, uh, and we will continue to uh, to provide um, you know cloud platform on on these hyperscaler uh, partners, and that gives us global reach. Uh, it gives you flexibility, uh, and and that's a major stream of of our strategy. And and as you could say, some of the services which I showed are available on, on that environment, um, or actually all of them. Now on NEO, um, number one, it's very important that you all see that we, of course, we will continue to support, to maintain, to operate NEO. Um, so that gives you investment security. Uh, of course, and, and, and you know, uh, things can happen at your pace. This has always been a very important principle for SAP. But of course, we we, we want to enable, uh, you know, our customers and partners to move to our multi-cloud architecture over time. And therefore, we are currently developing also uh, migration support. Uh, we are uh, working on this to, to make it for, for the major services, uh, to make it easy to, to move with our, with our support. Um, this is in the making. We have more details uh, to come about that one as well. But again, it, you know, NEO will, will continue to be supported, um, but our um, you know, mainstream direction is towards multi-cloud and, and we, are, we are working on having corresponding support and tools to help you on that journey as well. Thank you, Gunther. Um, we also are receiving uh, positive feedback, just to, to, to inform you on that during, during the Q&A. People are asking whether we can do that on a quarterly basis, so we'll, uh, we'll see whether we can you know, have that. So I, I, I'm mm -hmm. also enjoying uh, the back and forth here, and thank you for keeping the, the questions coming. Uh, dear participants, there's um, another one here um, on the extension suite uh, side of the house uh, on our different run times that we offer. And the question here from Vincent is uh, how we see the relationship relationship between Kima and Cloud Foundry, because uh, Kima can also be used, of course, to run custom applications now as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, you need to stop me at a certain point in time, Stefan and Greg, on this one, because this is a, a, rich, a rich and important area. So let me start by saying that 
in general, we find it very important that we support different developer personas as part of SAP Cloud Platform, right? There is, of course, the ABAP developer persona that matters a lot to us. And, you know, we are moving forward with Steampunk also on Cloud Platform. Um, then there is a second important persona. We call this the, the, you know, the Cloud App Developer. This is a, a uh, persona which we support with an opinionated development model using things like CAP and, and UI5 and so on, uh, our Fiori approach. Um, that's for developers that appreciate guardrails and a, and a clear programming model. And then there's a third group of, of developers, you know, native developers who, who, who have basically their own approach, their own way of programming. And that is where, you know, for example, via or with the, with the Kuma runtime, you can uh, deploy the output of that uh, development activity also in a very open way on, on, on a managed Kubernetes environment. So, so, so in general, we support these different personas. Now, on the platform, the, the first statement I wanted to make is we are about to, uh, um, you know, deliver the whole cloud platform uh, as a full Kubernetes-based deployment. This is not yet done, but it's in the making and we make good progress. Uh, why do we do this? Because, you know, Kubernetes is, is uh, becoming a de facto standard. Um, and, and that's the most elegant and the most standard way to, you know, deploy and, and uh, deploy into different environments. Now, having said that, it's not that we, uh, you know, put Cloud Foundry aside. We have, uh, we are using Cloud Foundry as a foundation for uh, a lot of our services uh, itself. So part of this mo uh, motion to Kubernetes is to actually put um, CF, uh, Cloud Foundry itself, into a Kubernetes environment and thus having a real um, uh, consistent deployment again on, on, on Kubernetes. So that means on the runtime question, we support different runtimes. Um, um, and, and, but over time, certainly it will also be a standard deployment to have it in, in Kubernetes and uh, uh, with a managed environment like uh, uh, Kuma. So in, in, in general, we standardize on, on, on Kubernetes, but allow for the different runtime environments. I think that gives a lot of flexibility. What we, what we aim at at the same point in time is, while we, we cater for the different personas, we still want to have common kernel services, common capabilities, um, like monitoring, like security, and so on, which are underlying so that even if you if you have different levels of, of programming model support, over time, this, this is uh, using a homogeneous foundation. So I hope that answer was not too long, but uh, awesome. I, I also hope it was appropriate. <laughs> Excellent, Gunda. Thank you very much. And I see Craig, uh, Craig is back. So Craig, why, why don't I put a question on you and then uh, also uh, also take that as a lead over to, to have the Q&A back over to you. So the question was, uh, how do we get a copy of the deck? Because uh, there are many interesting links here uh, to share. So I think that goes to uh, Craig maybe. Yeah, we will. I, I am back. Sorry about that. My internet decided that it needed a break, apparently. Um, we will take the deck and we will work together with, uh, with Gunther's office to make sure that we get that all that information uh, for you, you available in the SAP community after this call is over, along with the link to the replay of the recording. Wonderful. Cool. Thank and you. we'll we'll jump in right here with the very next question for you, Gunther, not yes. give you any chance to breathe. Um, this is a, a first one here, uh, related with partners expo exposing SAP, SCP capabilities to customers. Are there any perspective of providing partners more than trial versions in order to show value to customers? So how can we help our partners show more value? Uh, that's a great one. And I, I have to say, I'm not, deep in all of the discussions that currently go on, but maybe I can comment a little bit on our intention, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we, we wanted to make it easier for partners to get started and, and ideally um, only have a, a commercial spin into it if, if our partners are also making money, right? So only at that point in time, right? Um, 
and, and uh, I think there are several options uh, in discussion on how we can do this, uh, still uh, following revenue recognition rules and, and everything um, that we need to consider. But I would say it's a clear intention for us to uh, give partners an easier access with, with lower upfront uh, cost or no upfront cost. This is something that we have to determine. And then when hopefully you know the solution partners are providing is successful then then of course we can jointly benefit from it all right wonderful so leading right into that as we expand the idea the concept of the overall ecosystem the next question are developer communities outside of the traditional sat environments also a target for the sap cloud platform for example, the embrace developers in the Microsoft ecosystem could be addressed by showing them advantages of the SAP Cloud Platform for the development of enterprise software. Um, mm -hmm. and this is a very multi-level question, but I'll stop there and then I'll take up the next part of it as well. Yeah, um, I mean, there are several topics where we open up our development approaches to, to developer personas who might not be you know from the traditional sap ecosystem so for example when we stay with the kuma runtime and the managed kubernetes environment that's basically a standard environment so there's not a lot that we prescribe in the sense of what you do within the kubernetes environment so this is open to to all sorts of you know developers who who uh, you know just know how to deal with a with a kubernetes environment so um that's one open Part. I also mentioned the business application studio where if you, for example, a VS developer, you can, you, you can use this to also add, you know, code and, and value to the SAP ecosystem. So we have several layers. I wouldn't say that our goal is to address a developer persona in, in a garage kind of setting where you have no SAP footprint. And then we say we are the best choice uh, for you as a plain vanilla uh, development environment, right? So our value comes, uh, as I show here, when you have, when you integrate with the SAP world, when you want to expose the capabilities you add as a partner into the SAP ecosystem, when you make use of underlying business functionality and business services, that's where we play, but in a very open way. Uh, and, and I hope you saw this with some of the examples I, I uh, made today. All right. Now, the next aspect of this one is, um, and it goes in more into detail about how they feel that the, the openness of this is, is, you know, better for overall developer adoption. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn part of what they've asked or, or they've written here into a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, and this goes along the lines of influencing decisions at, at customers and, and everything like this. How are we targeting or working with the idea of young talent or new talent um, and new ideas outside of the SAP traditional space? Yeah, maybe I, this has multiple facets. Uh, you're totally right, Craig. Um, so number one, what you need to know is that we are, and this might be a internal view as well, but we are constantly bringing in new developers ourselves into SAP. And, and I have to say, when you look into the last years, we had numerous waves of, of just hiring people from, from in, in different countries, from different cultural backgrounds uh, and so on, because we feel this diversity matters, not only in the, in the diversity sense itself, but also with diverse skill sets and views on how development works. So uh, you could feel this and, and you could see this in the, in the range of developer personas we, we try to support, so we try to go broader. It's not like in the past where we have one model and that's it. So we try to open up, uh, number one. Uh, we, we also work with quite, uh, many external um, you know, entities in general. Um, universities, for example, I just, just one example, I just invited something like 50 consultants from some of our major partners in India just a few weeks ago. And uh, we, we walked them or we gave them our tools, actually the discovery center and the missions and stuff, and, and just try to you know, get their feedback 
on, on how development happens on cloud platform. Where can we improve? Where can we simplify? Um, uh, where do we need to open up? Um, and, and it's very important we have this, this, this open mindset to always get, get this input. We would not be able, I mean, it's, it's not possible to cater for all, all sorts of developer personas, I would say, but we definitely have a much broader reach. We're working with universities, with uh, partners, and, and you know, also other entities out there to, to give us constant feedback. All right. And if you have feedback on the product when you try it out, uh, let us know. We, we are uh, truly interested. Absolutely. Um, and folks, if you have feedback in general that you would like to give around the platform, the products or individual services, the SAP community is one of the channels that you can use for that. There are other channels though as well. So please take a look around and, and go that direction if you like. Now, there, there's several questions that have been popping in that are very, very detailed, technical, deep dive. Um, and a lot of them go and revolve around the concepts of monitoring, DevOps, and everything like that. And the question, I guess, would be, because I'm, I'm certainly not going to try to have you dig into the API level technical details, but would it be possible that we could put a future community call out that uh, specifically addresses DevOps in the SAP Cloud Platform environment? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we can we can schedule that, and and maybe just a few intro words on this one. Yeah, in general, when we look at how development on cloud platform works and and how we can uh, improve and boost productivity, there are always three parts of that story. One part is the overall onboarding and setup. Right, so uh, what, what you have to do uh, to, to connect your systems, to configure your dev environment, uh, to get all necessary tools into place and so on. And, and that's an area, quite frankly, where we, where we have and, and, and are about to improve because there's a lot of things that we can just automate for you, that we can, that we can do upfront, right? We have a concept of a booster I, this is again part of the and, and the, the terminology as you could see is also from space and, and science fiction like everything in the discovery center so the concept of booster is is like a a script that we execute a, across several script uh, steps sorry so that we can we can automate setup steps we can automate settings that uh, that you have already done for your development uh, efficiency so first part onboarding Second part is the actual development itself. That is where, you know, for example, in the opinionated model where we uh, look into CAP, where we use CDS, where uh, we make use of UI5 and Fiori elements and FLP and so on in a consistent way. And there's also a lot, you know, going on to streamline that, make it even more efficient and so on. But the third part, and now I'm coming to the, to the question that was raised here, we know this on day two, observability in general is key, right? That's uh, so uh, that makes use of our Dynatrace integration. We are investing into more monitors, uh, more instrumentation um, to make sure that on day two, we have a, a really strong setup into place to enable DevOps. Um, and, and by the way, this also, uh, I think in this session that we are then about to offer CICD, is is something that goes across you know these phases i just described right so we want to be efficient in and helping you in setting up your cicd but then later on in day two operations you want to be uh, really productive you want to have a high success rate of your pipelines uh, the deployment has to happen fast uh, you you, you want to have uh, quick round uh, trips and and these kind of things so as you could already see from just my small little talk, uh, there's a lot of uh, content and that certainly deserves a separate session. Maybe we can even structure it across these phases uh, because DevOps um, in the sense of you build it, you run it, uh, goes across uh, all of these aspects of, of our platform. Wonderful. I, I, I really appreciate the offer. Uh, we will take you up on that to, to get that out there. Um, we also had several pieces of feedback coming in via the Q&A in the chat 
Um, in particular, I'd like to call out to Amit and Francesco. Um, if you could please contact us afterwards, we'd love to set up a, a chance to hear that feedback um, in a more complete form instead of just scattered throughout the chat and everything like that. Um, I want to be sure that we didn't miss any of it, but we would be happy to collect that from you and get that over to uh, to Gunther and his office in order for them to take a look and, and see what um, they can do with it. So we're very much appreciated for that feedback as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are near the top of the hour. We only have a few minutes left. Um, so I, I kind of want to leave uh, Gunther with, with you the opportunity to kind of just give everybody a, a few parting thoughts on on the future direction um and you know mm -hmm. what you're hoping from them the community is here also to help sap um not just sap help the community so if you have a request from the community um we're all ears and open yeah absolutely i uh, and, and this is why i appreciate this chance in in this call to to have to reach out to you so i i hope i have I convey number one the fact that the ecosystem truly matters to us, and and yeah, historically SAP has not been always easy to partner with, easy to you know work with, and yeah, uh, I wanna I wanna clearly spell that out, but that's something that we we want to change over time, and it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, we need your input, we need your help. What you what you see is. SAP Cloud Platform as part of the business technology platform overall is really getting mainstream. We scale also the, the number of SAP applications on Cloud Platform, also very substantial uh, new bus uh, business applications is really increasing. And, and uh, just to give you one data point, we just uh, a week ago or so, the SAP Cloud Application Lifecycle Management component of SAP was released on SAP Cloud Platform. It's a very substantial product. I, they have a lot of microservices uh, bringing that together into a, a, a cloud-based uh, SaaS solution actually for, for uh, you know, managing the application lifecycle. Um, so uh, there's a lot happening, a lot is delivered. We are, uh, you know, working on delivering industry-based solutions on top of Cloud Platform and so on. And all of this is an opportunity for you as the, as the, um, the community in the ecosystem on the one side to give feedback, but then also, you know, uh, join that momentum and deliver value uh, to our customers and, and, and partners together. So that's what I would love to see. Um, and uh, we're very eager to hear your feedback, your thoughts. And we would also, and I, that's maybe my last statement, we want to do a better job in also rolling out what we do. And, and not everything will happen overnight, but we, uh, we, we deliver increments on a regular basis. And it's very important that, that we also convey this to you. So uh, all I can say is uh, thank you very much for being so, so interactive, uh, so chatty. Uh, I really enjoyed this, this conversation and I hope to hear more from all of you. Thank you. All right. Gunter, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, wonderful to have you. We look forward to the next one and the one after that and the one after that. So we're really excited to, to have you here with us and we look forward to the future. Again, folks, uh, the replay and links and everything else will be published in the SAP community as a follow up. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. You can follow the SAP Cloud Platform topic pages, um, as well as business technology platform topic pages, um, and get notifications when those updates come out. And uh, for those of you that, you know, we called out uh, wanting to get more of your feedback, if you would uh, please make sure you, you drop us a line, that would be fantastic. And everyone, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Stay safe.